If your iPad is just for watching stuff, this video is probably not for you. But if it's where you run your day, your business, or your brain, these apps actually hold up under pressure. Not only are these the first apps that I install on any new iPad, but these are also my least distracting apps. Not just useful, not just clever, these apps give me clarity, control, and momentum. Now this is not my annual best new iPad apps roundup, that's coming soon, like near the end of this month. This video is different because I'm not sharing experimental apps, new apps, these are the apps that I rely on, the apps that make my system work. It's funny because when you start with a fresh iPad, it makes you think what actually matters. You don't reinstall the fluff, you reinstall the tools that support how you actually live and work. So the first app on my list is Hey Email, and that's because it keeps my inbox clean and under control. I feel like most email apps that I've tried focus on dealing with the mess, but Hey is different in my opinion because it seems to prevent the mess from showing up in the first place. So I kind of view it like a personal assistant who only hands you the email that actually matters. Basically, it helps me stay focused instead of constantly reacting to junk or distractions. This next app is my place for writing, planning, and saving important stuff. It's Craft, and why it matters to me is that some Note apps feel chaotic, others are too stiff, but Craft just works. I actually wish that I had paid more attention to Craft earlier because not only is it simple to jot things down, it's a powerful way to organize stuff that matters. Yes, it's like a second brain that's always neat, ready, and easy to use, but beyond that, style really sets it apart, but it's easy to capture thoughts and build on them later all in one place. And I kind of use it in two ways, both for permanent document storage and for temporary daily notes. The business docs that I've sweated over that need to go into a vault and be ready to access and share are in craft. But also I use this for just jotting down like what did I get done today or kind of those fleeting thoughts that you wanna capture that goes into the daily notes. Next up is a smarter AI powered web browser that helps me work faster and find better info. It's the Arc browser, which on iPad OS is Arc Search. I also use this on the iPhone, of course, but it's not just for browsing, it's for doing, and that sets it apart. It has built-in tools that help me summarize articles, generate ideas, and even research for me automatically. So I really love the browse for me option, which if I search for something like Tribeca Hotels, just goes out and does all this research for me, hits all the websites, summarizes it. It's basically like a browser that thinks with you instead of just showing you tabs. So whereas most browsers are passive, Arc gives me leverage. Like, I love this. Here I am on the Frederick Hotel's website and I can just pinch to summarize. And instead of having to read through the whole website, it's just gonna give me a structured outline of the actual details that matter. Next up for me is one of my perpetual favorites called My Mind, which saves things I find interesting without making me organize them. So if I see something cool like this essay that changed my life, the high agency essay by George Mack, then I just save it. No folders, no hassle. And then when I want it later, AI surfaces it in a snap. I think of this app as a junk drawer that magically knows what I'm looking for. Without a doubt, it's the easiest way to remember the stuff that doesn't fit anywhere else without losing it. So I like to use it for low stakes storage, for things that might be useful or inspiring later, but don't need to interrupt my workflow right now. Of course, apps aren't the only thing I install on a new iPad. Quick shout out to today's sponsor, Paperlike. When I do use the iPad for writing or sketching directly, Paperlike makes it feel more like pen on paper instead of skating around on glass. It's a small change that makes a huge difference in focus, especially if you're doing deep work. So if you want your iPad to feel like a real notebook, check out Paperlike linked up down below. Okay, the next app is this. Wait, what is this? This is a Remarkable tablet. I thought this was an iPad video. Well, yeah, the Remarkable app brings my handwritten notes from my distraction-free Remarkable tablet over to the iPad. Here's the same note on both devices. I appreciate the focus that the Remarkable gives me. I know some people find this crazy. Why would you have this and an iPad? This thing helps me focus. It's not for everyone, but I still need to access these notes over on my iPad. So I do use the Remarkable Paper Pro, the new one, and it lets me do deep focus thinking on one device and still use the results on another. So yes, for my process, intentionally using a separate Remarkable tablet to think without distractions, this is not sponsored, is a major pillar of my workflow. Couldn't do without it. And that brings me to Super Whisper, which turns my voice into text for fast, accurate, no messing around transcription. But get this, it's an iPhone app. There isn't a full iPad version, but I still use it here because it's that useful. 
And because of the size, it actually makes split screen workflows work really, really well. So I could have something like Craft open on the left and Super Whisper open on the right, and it's super easy to get that transcription anywhere that I want it. My default mode these days is talking. I default to that over typing because it's so much faster. I just think clearer and better that way. And Super Whisper is kind of like having a mind reader that types everything that I say, and it just works. There's no lag, no weird errors. It just makes getting ideas out faster and simpler and easier. A big part of my workflow these days is leveraging AI, which really comes down to explaining things to AI, which I can do quicker and faster and better with something like Super Whisper versus just typing it all out. And that leads me to OneTap, which gives me quick access to stuff I use all the time, especially my own AI tools and custom prompts. So instead of searching around or rewriting the same stuff over and over again, I create it once, store it in OneTap, and then it's just tap and go no matter what app I'm in. So it saves me a lot of time and energy every day. It's kind of like a control panel for text-based shortcuts, not like Apple shortcuts that go in and use all this logic and hit different apps. I'm just saying it helps me stay in the flow. So here I've stored something called the contemplator, which I can drop into AI, and it will help me think through some stuff in a way that I wouldn't just get just straight out of the box with ChatGPT. I use this on all my devices, but on the iPad, it shows up as a keyboard. So anywhere that a keyboard can show up, one tap and all the stuff you stored in it can show up for a quick one tap to insert it wherever. And a lot of people use this for saving like addresses or canned email responses. But again, for me, I've spent hours uh, crafting custom prompts that I can use with AI that just, you know, if I run into a workflow and there's something that's gonna be repetitive, I can just drop this in and it's just like time compression. And so to have all of that on tap is ridiculous. And that leads me to my actual AI stack, which is ChatGPT and Grok, which I consider one and the same. I use ChatGPT for brainstorming, for writing, for solving problems. I feel like it's a little smarter than Grok at the moment still. They're both growing quickly, but Grok is great for up-to-date context that ChatGPT doesn't have. There's so many capable and powerful AI apps out there, and I do use others, but this is like having two genius assistants, one that knows what to say, and how to say it, and the other that knows what's happening right now in real time. And especially if I'm doing deep research, which I do all the time, let's say I'm going to plug in a client that I'm targeting, and I wanna use Alex Hormozzi's value equation, which is an amazing upgrade. You have gotta have that deep research. This does it quickly. ChatGPT has a lot of limits in terms of how often you can use their deep research, unless you wanna pay $200 a month. So Grok has that deep and deeper research feature that I can just you know ping off of each other and they pair well together. Now the apps that I showed today were not random. I want you to think about the pattern here. Every app I showed you respects your time and attention, right? They're not about doing more, they're about doing what matters with less effort. Hey, the email app reduces noise. Craft organizes thought. Arc adds smart action. My mind remembers for you. Remarkable keeps thought analyzed but accessible. Super Whisper speeds up capture. One tap brings back your best shortcuts instantly, and then ChatGPT and Grok help you think smart and stay sharp. So these aren't just apps that I like, these are apps that help me feel in control. And you gotta remember, when you reinstall the right apps, you don't just set up a device, you reset momentum. So let me know your must installs in the comments. I always find gems down there and stay tuned because my best new iPad apps of the year video is coming up at the end of the month and you're not gonna wanna miss it. It's gonna be a special one. That one's about discovery, whereas this was about dependability.